Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with my brand new Parker 51. This is the new version with the gold nib. This is the plum color, although <laughs> it may be hard to tell. I actually had to go and put it out in the sunlight to make sure this really was the plum color when I got it. And it, it is, it's just super, super dark. So I had ordered this as a pre-order from Endless Pens and they actually have a policy as to uh, when they will send you pre-orders. They say it's gonna be no later than 99 days. Pretty much all of my pre-orders have taken about that long to ship. So so this I ordered a long, long time ago as a pre-order. I got it, um, how much did I buy it for? I think it was $150, which is uh, quite a bit less than what this normally retails for. This retails in the 200s with the gold nib. There is a, a steel version, which is around $100, I think, normally. But because I did want to try the gold nib of this version of pen and not the steel nib, I went ahead when I saw it and got the pre-order. I think it was around Christmas, so it's it's been a while. And by the time I end up posting this video, it might even be longer. <laughs> but... Um, I, first off, I want to say that I know that there's been, not necessarily controversy, but I think a lot of people have indicated that they're not a big fan of this reboot of the Parker 51. So I do have an older Parker 51. And actually, let me go ahead and get that out so that we can compare it. Um, older meaning vintage. So, and I actually don't know what kind of nib is on this vintage Parker because um, I bought it secondhand. And I don't really, I don't know if it's steel or gold or what the deal is. So I, I basically had very little information on it. But this is a vintage Parker 51 and I'll go through some of the changes. And um, assuming I still have ink in here, I think I do, um, I will do a little writing sam sample comparison between these two. But essentially, um, as you can see, the new one is a little bit longer one of the largest differences that people have complained about is that the older Parker 51 is a pull cap, whereas the newer one, and this is for both the gold and the steel, it is a uh, twist cap. And uh, the filling mechanism is also different. So with this one, there is a little, um, what is this called? It's like an aromatic or uh, aerometric I think that might be it. But basically you squeeze in, once you're in the bottle of ink, you squeeze, 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 and then for, for like three different times and it'll pull the ink up into this little sack here. Personally, I think this is a very inefficient filling system and I was actually really happy that they changed it on the new one to uh, just be a converter. Now, one of the other things that people have complained about is that the steel version of the Parker the new Parker 51 does not have a converter included. And, you know, they kind of cheaped out on that one, I have to say. This gold version does come with a converter, which is nice, but you're also paying quite a premium for the gold nib. Um, so I don't know. And again, you know, the, the newer version is quite a bit heftier than this older version. And um, Parker 51s, the, the vintage versions, there's so many different versions and it seems like there are quite a few available out there in the world that people are selling. Um, a lot of it is, uh, you know, individual sellers, you'll find them on eBay or sometimes you'll find them on Peyton Street Pens, which is a great source for vintage fountain pens of, of all ages. <laughs> and, um, I think I purchased this one from Mercari, which is where I get a lot of fountain pens, but you know, it's hit or miss. I've, I've actually had a few mishaps on Mercari, so, you know, buyer beware on there. But, um, okay, so let me go, let me just do a straight up review and uh, walkthrough of this Parker 51 gold nib pen. So you have the gold cap. That's basically one of the basic differences between the gold nib and the steel nib version. The steel nib has a uh, stainless steel uh, looking cap and this one has a gold cap. The color, the body colors I think also are different, but I think the shape and size is about the same. So I already showed you the converter inside of here. And then it has this hooded nib, which is um, 
kind of unique to the original Parker 51, but the hood I think goes up a little bit higher on this one. It's like lifted up above the nib, which seemed a little strange to me. Um, here, I'll show you this one and then I'll open up the vintage one and show you that as well. And then it also has this little gold ring here. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, the hood is pretty much flush or uh, right on top of the nib on this vintage version. Um, and then it also has a stainless steel band here. So a lot of the design elements are the same, but just a little bit different. Uh, the screw cap uh, function on this doesn't really bother me. I, I feel like it might keep the uh, ink a little wetter because sometimes this pen will dry out, which is why I'm not really sure I'm going to be giving you a writing sample today because I had not planned on doing that. And um, I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll try because I know I, there should be ink in here, but um, I'm not, a, I don't mind the screw cap. I actually think that's an improvement. One issue is that you have a metal cap and a plastic body. So eventually your threads may wear out where they meet. Basically, I've just been really careful not to over tighten so that I don't strip the plastic threads. That's, that's what I've been doing. All right, so that's basically enough yakking about these pens. And let's go ahead and try and do a writing sample here. So this is my fountain pen test notebook, which is an A5 folio from Galen Leather. I will put a link down below to my most recent setup video. I, I recently changed it not too long ago, um, but the guts are still the same as far as testing out paper and pens. So let me go ahead and, and I'll talk a little bit about the nib and like things I like and don't like about the new one. Actually, let's go ahead and try this old Parker 51. Okay, so let me try dipping it into a little bit of water and see if I can get this one flowing because this one does have a tendency to dry out if I don't just write with it right away um, and leave ink in there. And I do have a super dry environment. So, okay, there we go. I've gotten it going. So we will, we will be able to do a writing sample on that one today. So this one posts and it posts very securely and is it very, very comfortable, this vintage one. So this is a vintage Parker 51. And I cannot remember what ink, hmm, actually no, I can remember. This is Twisby Sky Blue. And it looks a little darker than Twisby Sky Blue normally looks because there probably was some tainting of the ink um, with a darker ink that was already in this pen. I did clean it out thoroughly. I've filled it a few times. I cleaned it out thoroughly between both, but you know, vintage pens, sometimes you can't always get the old dried out ink out of them. Um, this one does have a working sack and everything if I want to replace that. I, I don't know. I, I have not dealt with working on vintage pens, so. But they're not as long lasting as converters or, uh, you know, converters can also be easily replaced and, and you can purchase them. But anyway, so that's that. It does have a little finial here that has sort of a little clear plastic area there curved on the bottom. And like I said, a little bit smaller. So, um, and one thing that I noticed right away is that this vintage pen, I'm not, I think it's a medium nib, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and it could, you know, it could be looking like a medium because it has been sort of worn down by use. Uh, but this one does not, this nib does not have much of a sweet spot, if any. Um, and I, cause I sometimes will roll my nib point a little bit one way or another. And I don't find that I have any skips or anything when I'm doing that. This one does have a definite sweet spot and uh, it's kind of hard to get uh, consistently. I have to really pay attention to not uh, rotating it one way or another. Another thing is when I post this version, and I don't know if this is true of the stainless steel version as well, but it feels a little back heavy. Um, and without the cap on the back, it feels a little too light to me. I mean, if, it actually feels very light and I wanna say almost chintzy with, without the cap. 
So, um, but it doesn't seem to scratch this plastic by posting the cap. So um, even though it's a little bit back heavy, I prefer it in this position. So this is the Parker 51. Oops, let's see. Yeah, see, that's the example. I have to make sure I have it at right the right angle. Parker 51. Uh, I'm going to call it the reboot. Let's see. And this, I know for sure, is a medium nib. And... Um, yeah, so I kind of have to get the hang of, you know, where is that sweet spot and stay there. Because if I don't stay there, I think I had it a little over rotated to correct. Um, but when I get it in the right spot, it's actually a very smooth and lovely and lovely nib. The ink that I have in here is Ackermann for Haut Violet. And um, I thought this purple was a really good match for, um, for the color of the body and all of that. So I actually find when, when I do get the, so, so let's see. So let's start sort of completely rotated. You'll see that there's kind of a sweet spot and then you, uh, there, there's a very limited sweet spot right here. <laughs> so I think with writing more with this, I'll get a little bit more used to it and be able to write consistently each time. Let's see, the quick brown fox. Um, but I do find this gold nib very, very lovely and smooth. And um, I, you know, at the price that I got it for, I think it's worth that. Uh, you know, would I pay t over $200 for this? Probably not. Uh, I, I do have, you know, some of the same complaints that other people have mentioned, like the sort of cheap, cheap feel of the body. Also, when I tap it, the uh, cartridge or the converter, you can also use this with cartridges. I think it might be proprietary. Well, I don't know, actually. I think they might be proprietary but uh, you could also use cartridges and um the the converter on the inside is sort of whacking against the pen kind of rattles around when you tap it um you know the threads with the plastic to the metal i can see how that could be a problem long term and if you're if you want this as sort of an heirloom pen yeah, I can see that's an issue, but I do feel like it might be an improvement if it prevents the ink from drying out. Uh, I have had this inked up for a couple of days and I uh, didn't use it for a couple of days and it didn't dry out, so I don't know. This one clearly, you know, it's been sitting longer too, so though it's not really a, a direct comparison, but I, I, I guess I have mixed feelings. Since I have it, you know, I paid a really good price uh, on it. I don't feel bad about the purchase. I feel like the nib is really, really beautiful. The gold nib is it's quite gorgeous, really. Um, I actually think I'm probably going to try to put a wetter ink in here with the next fill, just because this seemed a little bit dry in there, this Ackerman ink. But, um, and, and maybe it's just the contrast of this older nib that had been used a lot and was a little bit broader because of the use and it flows really well. But like I said, this one does not really have a sweet spot. Actually, let's go ahead and see if we can find, let's see, so I'm all the way on its side. Yeah, it has a much bigger, bigger range. I mean, here you're kind of getting into, it might be a little over rotated, but uh, you only have a limited, a limited uh, space on the nib where you can get lines here whereas here you have sort of a broader range. And again, that could, just could be from continued use and wearing down the nib, but that is my uh, semi-review of the new Parker 51 with a gold nib. And I figure since I had uh, talked about it on the channel a long, long time ago about ordering it, I, I should do the follow-up with the review. But uh, that's all I had for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below and I'll answer when I can. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. 
In the meantime, I hope to see you next time, but have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.